them to a, a T-54 with a Russian medium as well, but with much better gun handling and that ram potential as well. Much agreed. Looks like both teams are in here. Everything's getting set up. I'm going to go ahead and lock down this room. Call it final. Make sure there's no randoms in here. Nope. And no, we seem to be fun. All right, so DB coming out with interesting lineup already. A few conquerors. So a conqueror is a very good, um, very good tank for a map like this as well. Excellent hold down, like great gun handling. Problem with a conqueror is it. It ties your hands in what you can do meta-wise as well. The Conqueror is a lot of things, but it's never been accused of being fast. Yeah. So for holding down things like an encounter cap, it's great. Um, but if DP, they use that extra mobility. Oh, no, they seem to go for a Conqueror as well. But if, um, if one of those sides use their mobility as well, it's going to really put those Conquerors at a disadvantage, especially when taking three of them. Yeah, so I, I, as we've seen Laura Vate doing now. If eight's running three, I, I believe they're gonna they're gonna use that valley. They're gonna go down in the valley and c try to come up on the backside and say like G five, run and hold that that valley. Uh, that that's my guess. Um, with the three conks, or I mean, I I would not be surprised to see um, three conquerors try to get some cap pressure and use possibly some mediums in the north to be able to cover the northern flank, because that's where uh, they're most uh, vulnerable from. Correct. Uh, in a camp like that. If, if, um, if DP decide to give south with free, uh, free conquerors um, in the cap circle, they're going to have a hell of a time trying to dig those things out. Both teams slowly getting everything out. All right, so we... There's the pair of E50s, one T54, great on the up close, in your face type battle the T54 is. Get some great bounces out of that tank. Yeah, it's also excellent at range as well. The E50's got great gun handling as well, but the um, the penetration on the premium rounds is lacking compared to um, the T54. So, and obviously you've got the APC, uh, um penetration drop at range as well where the 54 has heat and doesn't have to deal with things like that so against hold down conquerors the 54 is the better choice uh, t30 interesting choice and here comes the lichen out of uh, kite running the lichen there I, a good friend of mine just joined Law, Law of Eight. Really good guy. Um, Logan doing a little quick pick there. Just enough time. I decided to swap out that T54 for another E50. That's not a bad choice at all. Let's say they're both comparable in uh, DPM. Oh, I need to find out if they want specs or no specs. We'll wait for Law of Eight response here from Vader. No specs. All right. So here we go, guys. Uh, Frazzle, do you want to roll down that DP tank listing? And then uh, King, if you want to roll down that Law of Eight side. All right, we got a Lycan, three fifties, and three Conquerors. And on the DP side, we have two Conquerors, three E-50s, a surprise entry, a T-30, interesting choice, and a Bulldog to round off the 761. All right, some great tanks there. Interesting, yeah, most definitely interesting with that T-30. Um... Now, it'll be, it'll be, it will be very interesting to see what they do about T-30. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a huge hitter. Huge uh, penetration, huge alpha as well. I mean, a lot of teams use it as a as as a deterrent as well to be able to lock down a flank 
or something like that as well. No, no one wants, no one in the media wants to show their face to a T30 and take a 750 Alpha monkey slap to the face. I'm trying well, to on an open map like this as well with a slow tank. Sorry, I'm trying to brush up really fast on my WCL rulings. If a tank change was allowed. I believe it was allowed within the time frame as well. They'd have um, X amount of minutes and they could swap around as much as they want during that. Uh, teams swing to the last 10 seconds and then just going for it. So as not to be counterfeit. But I do believe that falls within the rules so they can change that. The thing is, though, those conquerors, if they're firing APCR, they can go through the gun, man, all the T30 if they hit it flat. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get probably get this launched. All right, let's do it. We're getting launched. All the controversies have taken over is done, so. First match out, Sand River, DP, Law of Eight, let's get it on. Everybody's sitting there wondering, what happened to the stream? What happened to the stream? As everybody, uh, to be known, this is on a 10-minute delay. Uh, that is one of the requirements. If you do want to, uh, like a WCL format or something like that, and it has just kind of become the known across the board uh, to have that 10-minute delay for no stream sniping. Uh, stream sniping. All right, guys, here we go. See, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with this T-30. Yeah, um, my thoughts is they're going to try to use it to lock down the flank or to pressure the cap. It seems well, to be the only ways in which you can use it. It does happen quite a bit. They're all going up uh, up in the hills, so good call on that one there, uh, there Fraz. Good job. You called that one dead on. Yeah, that's what I'd do with this sort of setup as well. Like got um well, DP's well, DP mediums down there interesting they're gonna go each gonna go up put a little maybe possibly a little cat pressure on just to do a quick spotting yes yeah, this is a very good uh, one like to see um in the position leech is in right now you can actually put someone in inside the cap and there's not a lot they can do about it as well, unless they pressure the cap completely or uh, manage to go down south. So, interesting place for of course, Chicken Hunter and that Conqueror so. watching the rear flank. Mojo already taken, getting fired at, being spotted by. Ooh, Kite getting hit pretty hard there. I think it's Soy that has to be spotting Mojo. Enough getting up into position. So it's, I'm really uh, hoping this lack of a fire extinguisher on some of these tanks doesn't come back to bite DP. All right, so here comes the hard push. Chicken Hunter is going to be singled out. I believe it might as well. This is, um, I think DP have left themselves in a bit of a bad situation here. They've put their 50s too far out in the position where they can't actually support. There's the ram and the drive over. They're conquer out and their T30. Wrecked. Oh, here comes a big gun of that T-30. Wow, that was a very big hit on um, AC-50 there. Soy getting deleted. Run down now, trying to make the charge also to get rid of Chicken Hunter. Run down, his run got stopped getting tracked. Now he's completely sideways. Chicken Hunter getting a shot in his side. E50s back in. So, um, oh, see, that was a shame there as well. I thought we were going to see a very big push on the Conquerors from mm -hmm. um, from eight, 
and it just sent the unfortunately the lone e50 in there and it didn't manage to do the job enough time for dp to bring the rest of their troops back in new slowly coming around eight now here they come here oh, comes the big push yep here comes the push just illusion now gonna fire upon bohemian fawn brig house getting almost one more shot into him Ooh, magic bounce on the butt brig house getting taken down there They go go across GG's first game going to DP with all seven tanks still left in the game. That's yeah, interesting. I really thought for a second that um, Laura had that as well. If it, I think if it had formed up um, their E50s all at once and pushed in on the Conqueror's location, they could have systematically knocked out the first Conqueror, then the T30, then quickly cleaned up the other Conqueror. Because uh, DP's E50s were so far out of position that they never would have been able to get back in time to do anything about that. Yeah. Uh, Chicken Hunter coming in with over 3k damage. Great job to him. Even with two YOLOing E50s coming at him, he stayed in the fight and dealt out some great damage. All right, we're going to switch sides here. I'm going to have to meet my mic real quick. Uh, Hellcat, I got to go feed my dog, so. No problem. It's all good. All righty, there we go. Wonderful to see a look. I mean, eight's gonna. Ha it, it probably gonna have to be like, all right, we gotta change some. You can't run that again. That was too spread out. We got singled out real easily. What are you thinking? Uh, the change is gonna be on this brass. Well, fundamentally, I don't think there was a a massive problem with a lineup, so to speak. It was more about the the aggression they had to go in with. It's, they seemed rather hesitant to be able to push on those conquerors. I feel like if they had done that, as uh, even with their um, the lineup they had, they could have quite easily won this as well. The 353 Conqueror lineup is something I've seen before, and something I've in fact used before on this very map as well. And it can be very effective as well, but it's it's knowing when to push and when not to. Unfortunately, uh, Laura 8 didn't quite get it right in the last one. Hello. Welcome back to Reform. The room is open for you, sir. It is on the east. Yep. I'm in. What's the uh, score at the moment? Right now, DP up by one. One zero? Yes, sir. One zero first. Right. So we're going to have encounter night. Other than the 768 format, which will be in standard format, uh, Tanker, you want to run down the DP side, and then I'll have uh, Braz run down the 8 side. Yep. All right. So DP has one T30, an M41 Bulldog, three E50s, and two Conquerors. And it seems like Laura Vate have stuck with the same lineup they have last time, with one Lycan, three E50s, and three Conquerors. Mm -hmm. Both teams have not switched up their lineup from last time as well. No, it looks like identical lineup. Alrighty. Lights have blinked. Here we go. Round two. I'm wondering if Law 8 will capitalize on pushing better this time. They sent their tanks in one at a time the last round, which got them killed. One by one. If they pushed their E350s at the time, they would kill the T30 and the conch. Absolutely right. I'm hoping to see a bit more aggression from them this time as well. You can't give uh, a team like DP a chance like that to reform as well. They're, they're 
experience enough not to let that kind of thing happen to them. I'll be right back. I'm going to make myself some uh, oats. Okay, no problem there, Tanker. All right. Welcome in, bees. I can get the room open for you next round. All right. Just trying to get situated. No problem. Eight this time running, uh, going down to the ditch quickly. Vader not there? Did they have a DC? I'm thinking so. Vader not moving from his spot, possible DC, so... Lob eight down a tank. DP now coming over, running the two line this time, electing to throw those E-50s out there as snipers. So this quite interesting chicken hunter staying put up here yeah this is um this is a very good strategy actually this is something uh that i've seen and used before um just putting that bulldog up there just to spot it being it minimizes the hp risk to yourself as well while you've got these highly accurate e50s coming in who are soon going to be able in a position to be able to start tearing the e50s from uh, lower Vay apart Basically. hopefully they'll recognize us soon and be able to get out of it like Vader's back in the game. So we're gonna... Oh, and here come, here come the hits. Here come the hits from the E50s as expected. Now, Lord Vader have recognized the position. Hopefully, they'll readjust. Tremor Phil kind of going out a little wide there. E50 does not turn on a dime. And he does take a shot from the Bulldog on that. Soy pushing up deeper into there all by himself. Yet again, another YOLO. Why would you do At that? this point, I don't know. At this point, the E50s really should be falling back and regrouping as well. Um, so he's very lucky not to take a hit from, uh, big hits from the Conqueror and the T30 um, for that push. Excellent crossfire by DP so far as well. They've really developed map control. We've yet to see the Conquerors from um, Laura of Eight. No. All right, Seem to be rather redundant. Kai getting pushed and almost, I'm, is he, they going to take down Kite from the distance? You going to make it out of there? All right, he does, but DP now has their E-50s. Cross shots locked in now. They're fighting out of a corner, Law of Eight is. Yeah, once again, we've seen DP get the, much better map control here as well and they the conquerors i feel have been actually useless so far as well they've moved a few back to be able to uh, try to deal with the the 50s which is probably the right move kite needs to stay alive and there he goes kite needed to drop that spot so he could uh still utilize his team to keep an eye on that that other conqueror in the t30 out there in the distance so Law of Eight's eyes gone right now. Yeah, we're seeing TP do exactly the right thing as well. They're using that that mobility they have to flex around the map. It looks to me like TP have they have like take down the last of these yep, low health E fifties. All right, let's get in here. We got oh, to. Goodness gracious. That was an excellent push by DP here. They recognize that the um, Law of Eight Conquerors were not in a position to directly support the U50s, and they capitalized on that. Lucian, Brighthouse, and Vader now fighting off the main set. DP not losing a tank yet. So we can't count it out yet as well. We've got three practically full health Conquerors as well. Conquerors obviously have a lot of health and a hell of a lot of DPM and firepower. 
Laura Vega with the focus, fair fire right now. Concentrate on knocking out these low health targets. This is uh, still anybody's game. Vader with the automatic fire extinguisher getting shot in the butt by now the, the bulldog. Big trouble. DP is going to go up on this one. They certainly are. Unfortunately, Laura Vega not. Um... What is I what I expect from them really? All right, there we go right now. Deep wow, we got a nearly three k damage from uh, Doug Venerate in his in wow. his bulldog of all things as well. Wow. That's a that's a hell of a damage roll for a tier seven in this format. And even though we got the win, the T30 throwing up donuts across the board, it never really had a chance to get back into the fight. It was just a little too far out. Okay, so I thought the T30 is a quite an interesting choice on this one as well. I mean, it's a hell of a lot of firepower as well, but it's because it's so slow, so immobile as well, it's getting it in a position to actually do that damage in the first place, which is easier said than done on a map as, as big as Sand River. Yes. All right, uh, Beeb, the room is open for you. We're taking this now over to Steps. Keep forgetting to switch, it, uh, switch that off to counter mode here. All right. Room's back, locked down. There we go. I'm looking at the stream right now, and I do have to say that it does look fantastic, if I do say so myself. It does, and I have to big shout out yet again to Frazzle. This is the first time rolling out with this layout uh, made uh, by Frazzle. Gives it a uh, more professional look here, so thank you very much, sir. Big shout outs to you and your artwork. Yeah, very welcome. I tried to keep in, in line with that fantastic logo that uh, Damage did as well. Yes. I don't think I could improve on that personally as well, so I just tried to emanate the style where I could. Yeah, I mean, it, distressed, I like it. The colors, everything, it, match, it, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So, big thumbs up. Thank you, Frazzle. You're the man. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, be moving on here to see what everybody's going to be running on steps. It's going to be an interesting roll. Law of Eight, really successful on this map. Uh, I've seen them play on steps quite a bit, and they're very, very successful with their strats that they do pull off. So... Two. ST ones. Now that is an interesting choice. ST one, obviously, being a very good hold down tank as well, able to lock down corridors and flanks particularly well. But once again, we're seeing a we're seeing a very large open map, um, where it's often advantageous to be able to move around the map and change flanks at a moment's notice. And when you play something like an ST one. Um, But I could be wrong. I hope they prove me wrong. Yeah, definitely interesting to see how these these really good hold down tanks will do. Um, but the good thing is the STI is one of the fastest heavies you can get. It just needs help. It needs a push. You need something with a lot of horsepower to get it up up to speed. So. We'll see what happens over there on the eighth side. DP, I'm willing to say, you're going to come out with the almost typical, almost same lineup as they did on Sand River, I feel. Yeah, I would not be surprised if we saw that same lineup. Pro potentially minus the, the T30 thing, is it? Um, it, uh, it showed it at its best uh, during those.
I've been trying to talk for the past five minutes and I realized I was mute. I mean myself. You. <laughs> Noob. Yeah, I was asking, when did you get your uh, partnership with Twitch, Hellcat? Because mm-hmm. I noticed you had the subscription box, so uh, I was subscribed when I, did, when I seen that. Um, let's see, it's been a while. Um, and I much appreciate that subscription. Um, but yeah, uh, about two months we became affiliate, uh, affiliate with Twitch and also YouTube. And YouTube as well. Very impressive. Speaking of which, let me head over there. Use all jamming out on this end. So a big shout out to everybody across the stream, YouTube, Twitch, everywhere. Good hello, and how are you guys doing? I'm right, both teams slowly getting their tanks picked up and, and everything here. Seems with DP have gone for the uh, typical lineup what we've seen from the past two maps. What we like to see on a map like Steps is, especially from a from a lineup such as Laura Vader doing now, they've gone rather heavy lineup, good hold down tanks, good for keeping an enemy team position. It'd be interesting to see someone bring out an RE piece on this map. It's like RT can be absolutely devastating on a map like Steps. Yes. Um, and when from this weekend, uh, with well, your guys' match with uh, bringing out that 4043, uh, that was a huge, huge. He, he was throwing up huge numbers 2,800 on one battle. Another battle, I think he threw up 2,261. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a devastating tool on this as well. It, and it's, it's an easy map to be able to try and keep people in place. And what you do when you bring an RE and you start pummeling uh, people like that is you, you force their hand, you force them to move potentially out of position and then that's when you jump all over them yes. 761 is a great format for this as well because uh, you can bring along a GW Panther as an excellent uh, eye for this thing you don't take up one of your nine picks at the same time there's plenty of mediums also that can take the, the lights roll and do just as good job one thing I'm surprised I'm not seeing is WZ and T10 on this map they really roll this map if they can get in the positions on a, a encounter, yeah, that's true. I'd like to. I'd like to see T10s and uh, WZs as well. They're, they're some of the strongest um, tier nine heavies, in my opinion, as well. And like you, you, we see a lot of them towards, especially towards the end of a WCL. We saw a lot more of tanks like that. Uh, people favoring the the fast heavies over the more heavily armored ones, such as the ST1 and uh, the E75. Alrighty, looks like everybody's getting ready to go here. Um, three, seven, seven. All right, we're good to go on this end. Uh, I'll do eight this time. Beaver, do you want to go down DP? Beaver, not there. Reform tanker, would you like to go down DP? Yeah, sure thing. Alrighty, go ahead, sir. All right, so DP has one Lycan, three E50s, a uh, Skoda, and two Conquerors. Law of 8 coming out with a Bulldog, one T54, pair of E50s, pair of STIs or ST1s, if any which way you want to call it, and then one Conquer. All right, guys, so here we go. I'm going to do the blink. And game three starting. Do or die for Law of 8. They need to get this win if they want to continue. Yet again, uh, I want to say thank you to all the viewers. Love us, like us, hate us, follow us. Check that follow button. Check that subscribe button. Give us a shout out on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. Uh, we're almost everywhere now. Um, Website coming in relatively soon. It looks like I just got to do some finalized money counting uh, on for, for it being built. And then also the mobile app, which is also now getting uh, is being built for your Android devices. Wednesday night fights on Android. All right, here we go. 
Eight on the south side here. Be interesting to see what they're going to do with this bulldog. I have a feeling that bulldog's going to march right up that three line. Because it looks like rundown's in position. Nope, he is out. Of, uh, he got out of the way. So chicken hunters liking spotting out eight snipers. It looked like they were going to shoot the lane. But they lost uh, all the vigil. Myself very quick. I'll be back in one second. No problem, sir. All right, so the long trek now comes for both teams' heavies to make it all the way across the map. <laughs> the people that are better mobility is going to make it there first. Let's see if they can get into the strong position. Or if they'll even go there. Nope. I'm going to try to position this camera the best I can for you guys because there's going to be a lot of action and a lot of fire being going on here in just a few moments. Multiple teams meet, not going to be meeting up oh, here on the line. Oh, that bulldog always bulldogs foot himself over. Yep, on his side there. All right, big shots now coming in. Disillusion getting the shots in on Angry Nuck, but Angry Nuck getting a... Uh, Quick snap reaction. Soy just now getting back on his feet and losing half of his health at, at that time. Bohemian Fawn now getting completely swarmed. The only thing that's stopping him from getting just absolutely deleted right now is the hill. The rest of the team of eight is get, getting paid for it, though, from the distant snipe shots from the Conquerors. Everybody's struggling. Angry Nuck getting focused out. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. He is gone. Soy getting singled out here. Logan next on the list. Everybody in the pool. Logan on fire. GG's. Back to the garage. You go. Next up in the line is going to be uh, Spaniel. Spaniel 21 going to be have to hold hold off the big giant onslaught. Chicken Hunter trying to come in behind Br Brickhouse. Meeting him with his T-54. Chicken Hunter needs to get out of there, focused out, boom, gone. Here comes the Skoda with his three-round clip, one into rundown. One into disillusion, two into disillusion, he's, and he's gone. He's on the reload. Law of Eight throwing out some damage. Downside is they have two STIs that are almost at three-quarter health coming into the fight. So Brighouse and his T-54 take it on the Skoda, which is still on the reload. Huge miss. That Skoda gets reloaded. Brighouse is going to be in big trouble. Two to one here. All right, I've returned. Welcome back. Huge. There we go. Spaniel maybe getting taken out. They need to get rid of Spaniel. He is still alive. There it is. So yeah. Laura right now, we really need to use that aggression. It's not getting up in this conqueror's face and make it hard for him to pen these shots. Law of Eight definitely pushing hard this time. Getting all all these quick kills out of the way. And these STIs barely getting technically scratched. So now you have a a one-third health conqueror and an almost dead Skoda versus two STI still at almost half health. Oh, yeah. uh, I feel like DP just made a very critical error here by dropping that conqueror down low. They've given the SD ones a very easy overmatch on it, which we seem to be capitalizing on. Okay, so yeah, kind of just so made himself a line rather. Has yep. to pin all of his shots. There's one out. There's two out. Three out. Curious Dan still left. See, I don't think the Skoda can do it, and they'll stick killers really he needs to get out of here as quickly as possible, and he doesn't make it. That's it. Eight coming back. Nice turnaround for eight. That seems to use those SD1s absolutely correctly. Throw them out there, use them as a uh, bullet sponge. Uh, right, seeing some really the... big damage numbers from those SD1s. Yeah, 24,000. Wow. 
Well, they, they should have just gonna disappear and reappear. He just should have fell off the map, Jerry. They wouldn't know where he's at. You gotta keep the enemy team guessing where where you're gonna put your tanks at. If they know where your team is at, they're gonna rush one guy that can come after you. So I had to step away there. I had a pug that was choking upstairs just after licking a carpet, as you do. Oh, yeah. All right. Got everybody swapped over here. Correct, correct. All right, there we go. So round two on steps. Eight coming out with... A really, really good, forceful push that was successful. It was scary at times, but very successful. Hey, hey Scott. <clears throat> yes, you forgot to put uh, Fawn on the other side. Fawn. I don't think you want to play for a lot of eight. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, he was underneath all of us. Uh, underneath the. Thank you for the catch there, Beef. Yeah, Laura ain't looking like they want to take those same ST ones again. The danger they have now of this is that uh, DP uh, understand the way they're going to be using them. They're going to be trying to fray them in DP's face as uh, as much as possible. Hopefully, DP will be able to learn from that, keep them a distance, and start whittling down that health with the E50s and the Conquerors, which are excellent at range. You want to say welcome to everybody that is watching across the stream world. This is the Wednesday Night Fights. We're on uh, game th three, four. Going on game four here on uh, the DP versus Law of Eight match. DP up by two. Law of Eight with, uh, with the one win that we just saw. So it does look like DP is uh, coming out heavy. And they're interesting. Throwing out their own ST1 to be able to counter the ones from Door of Eight. Trimmer Phil did have an STI up there. And then quickly pulled it back down. Maybe a little bit of Counterpicking almost going on there. Nope, it's back up. <clears throat> Clock winding down here on the teams so they can get uh, get picked here. Looks like over on the eight side, almost the same lineup. DP just changing out one tank on that one. Alrighty, there, uh, Praz, do you want to roll down the DP side? And then, uh, King, if you want to run down the law of eight side. Alright, we got a T54, two E50s, two STIs, a conk, and it. M41 Walker Bulldog. And on the DP side, we have a Lycan, two E50s, a Skoda T50, an ST1, and two Conquerors. Alrighty, guys, and here we go. Round four. <clears throat> this is for the Gusto. If eight does take this, eight forces their hand in, into the draw on Encounter Ghost Town. So... Everything's on the line on this map. Yeah, because we all love Ghost Town. What I'd really like to see from DP in this round is to use the extra mobility they have um, to be able to counter that brute force of those SD1s. So 
I think we are going to get a, uh, start having a little bit different of a theme music we're going to have on here. I think I'm going to go with a little bit more of a more techno or NFL style. Try to get the copyright infringements. <clears throat> yep. Gotta get. Have you through. heard of um, Electro Swing? Uh, Electro Swing, yeah, yes. Um, yeah. I, I, I do have one guy that I am talking with, uh, a musician who does really, really well electronica. Um, that maybe for a small price, do a theme song, uh, an opening tune for Wednesday Night Fight. So. Yep. Soy getting a quick running across the field like a bat out of hell. Trying to get. Lots of hit you. Spotting up Logan did not get Ooh. Bohemian Fawn. Ooh, big hit, big hit, big hit. Watch out for the trees. Yeah, I feel like this bulldog is really badly overcommitted there. That could have lost, cost quite easily cost him his entire tank. So everybody on DP side but Bohemian Fawn getting lit up. So. STI, Dude. one STI going low. Now Fawn getting spotted there. See, to me, that feels like a bit of a waste of a, of a light tank self as well. On encounter battle on steps, you've got, already got a good idea where the enemy's going to be. There's no need to risk your light tank in such a such a maneuver to just to ascertain that you finish your individual position. Like in missing one. Like in hit two. See, now. Three. Four. Five. Yep. Um, and with that reduced health pool that he lost early on as well, that obviously put him at a massive disadvantage as well. Um, unnecessary risk I felt early on. Without that uh, rear guard um, bulldog as well. Um, uh, yeah, that lock is going to go from the lichen. The only one that could really counter the Lycan right now would have to be Brighouse. Because it'd be pointless having an STI come out of the fight to go after a light tank when he's, his cannon's needed forward. Certainly as well. They need to do something about him as well. He's going to put consistent damage in there if they don't. Vader getting melted, going across the middle of the field. Lost three quarters of his life just to reposition. Rundown going out farther wide did get to manage to save his health. So those two need to tag out, one get in front of the other. Right See, now, yeah, um, Law of Rage trading a bit bad here, you know, kind of risking too much HP just to get some spots in our reposition. Mm. It's not really working out for them in the long run. No, they still haven't dealt with that light tank as well. He's picking off yep, huge down. chunks of their mediums now. Yep, Vader going down because of the Lycan. The Lycan is just literally. Excellent to death. This is Christmas for a uh, for a tier seven light tank. It really is. Trimmer Phil taking a big hit. All right, so he, it looks like they're going to go for a push. I don't know why they. It, it, I mean, they're on the ropes. DP just holding their own, and now the STIs and Conquers. Here comes the Skoda. Yeah, this looks like a rather decisive victory for DP in this match. Yes. And it's unfortunate as well. Like I feel like Lorovic threw away a lot of health unnecessarily as well. Early on with that um, bit of a YOLO spot from the Bulldogs, well, lost a lot of health as well. Repositioning the mediums on that flank would not be a terrible idea. The, uh, but at, the, at um, what expense? Could, I mean, that was, that was horrible. Huh. It was. It was they, where they moved across, they had lost so much health. They should have doubled back, dealt with the Lycan, and then they would have had that flank to themselves, like completely unopposed. And then they could have harassed the Conquerors as much as they pleased. But yeah, yeah. they rushed it and paid the price for it. All right, let's go on down here. Looks like uh, DP only losing one tank, and that's Bohemian Fawn in the E50 with 2246. Uh, Spaniel coming at 2820 with his Conquer. Good job, GG's. Brighouse over, uh, over there on. Eight side, 1554. Uh, sorry, apologize, 1543. Termophil with 1801.
GG's both yeah, great job both teams thank you for coming out and put on a great 761 WCL 2 format show you guys are awesome uh, are they asking to run the last map think are they done are they wanting to run looks like they're wanting to run it all out for you guys so we're going ghost town encounter All right, there we go. They're going to pick quickly. We're going to get this uh, game five in here real fast, and then we'll open it up for the uh, Nightmare versus uh, UGCC. So, and then we'll also have a, another uh, friend to come in here. Finally, some take tans. All right, eight almost completely up. He just needs to pick one more tank, and then uh, DP just needs to throw up theirs. We'll go on a little bit of overtime here. Put on a hell of a good show for everybody. I want to, yet again, I want to say welcome to everybody. It's coming in. Some great battles coming out. Got some great uh, <coughs> fights across the board. Welcome to uh, everybody in the U uh, on the YouTube gaming portion. Doing a live stream into the YouTube gaming also. You guys are awesome over there on that end of YouTube. Thank you. What do you guys think? Just for fun, game five. Where's your money at? I, I'm glad to see the uh, law of eight change to the ice free for uh, LTTP as well. It doesn't seem like uh, a light could do a lot, but I know uh, things like a an LTTP high DPM that can whip around the map and take advantage of all the alleys and things like that can be devastating uh, on a map like this. So I'm glad to see they they change their pick back from the ice free to that. They're going with a heavy mobile lineup on Law of Eight side. So what do you th okay, King? What do you think? If you had fifty bucks on the game, which team? I'd like to see Law of Eight win because they have these some of the strongest comp tanks on their team. They got three WZs which have like five hundred alpha. If they roll 
just All a little right. high. And a 340 pin and T10s that have 440 alpha. The 330 pin. All right, so we got 50 bucks on eight. Uh, Frazzle, you had 50 bucks. For, uh, which team you put it on? Um, I'm going to go for the same as well. Um, I really like that lineup as well. I feel like if they move around together and focus their fire, then there's not much they can stand up to that sort of onslaught. All right, Bay Beaver, you got 50 bucks on this game. What are you picking? I'm going to go DP. You're going to go DP? I got to go DP. All right, and then Tanker, you still there? Yeah, yep. You got 50 bucks on this game. What do you call? Um, I'm, yeah, probably going to pick DP as well. Go with DP. All right, so we got to cross the board two for two. I got to stay neutral. So uh, this is going to be awesome here. All right, Tanker, you want to run down DP side? And then uh, Beave, if you want to roll down that law of eight side. Yep. All right, so DP is running one Lycan, two E50s, two T10s, and two STRs. Okay, and law of eight has the LCTP, three T10s, and three WZ, one, 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 fours. All righty. Here we go. Everybody's going to be getting ready to spectate this. Time for the fun match. And here we go. Game before five. Somebody comments, yes, I added a whole lot of extra ones to that. Yes, you did. <clears throat> great. There's some great uh, conversations going on out there in the Twitch world. That's awesome to see. Keep, uh, keep doing that. And just a reminder to all, all the people here, if you are are busy and talkative uh, person here on Twitch, YouTube, and across the board, um, yet again, there is, and has been running, $100 to the top viewer uh, at September 1st going on to se uh, September 2nd. So um, keep in there, stay active, be... Uh, be proactive and just visit the forums, uh, visit us on Discord, visit everywhere, uh, and just be active with us, and that viewer will get $100 cash in their pocket. All right, here we go. All right, guys. We got literally two uh, two, uh, two teams of commentators here uh, for Law of 8 and B, so this is awesome. If these WZs and T10s catch up to E50s anywhere, that's an auto pin unless it's in, unless they miss and hit the front plate at extreme angles. That's the only chance E50s have it bouncing them. Uh, let's see, Bohemian Fawn and Chicken Hunter going out way wide, trying to get that quick spots out there. LTTB of uh, law, uh, of law of Eight getting quick spots on everybody on that end. See, I feel like Glory of Eight has missed. A, oh, they got some big hits in there as well. I feel like they've missed a chance in their T10s, and like um, they could take advantage of that. Trimmer Phil getting pulled out there, but now he is blocking the rest of his team for coming out. Now he's he's getting melted. They need a. He's creating a big choke point. That was the big worry. Ooh. You have a large group of people. That are a lot tank and medium tank need to uh, hurry up. Focus fire real, taking out the STI. One more shot. No nope, people yeah, shooting at Ian now. They're leaving the STI alive, which is a huge mistake. There it goes. Ian now and his T10 going to be getting melted. Here comes Logan from the side. Going to be, oh, big miss from Logan. LTTB going down. Chicken Hunter taking out Curious Dan. All right, here comes the crossfire scenario. Worst case scenario that you could have. Low tanks on health and being shot from three different directions. Yeah. DP's got yeah. this. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not seeing that aggression we need from Law of Eight right now. They had superior mobility and a lot of firepower as well. And rather than sit there and trade with uh, a side scraping SD1, they need to just get stuck in around the corner and like uh, put that firepower to good use. Unfortunately, they got caught in this courtyard, where it was quite easy for. DP to hold them in place with uh, those big hitter SD ones and just wait for the cavalry to arrive. All right, so now they're trying to get rid of Bohemian Fawn. Here comes Dark Ventner, coming in quickly. They're gonna get Bohemian out of here. Here comes the quick re boom. 
Come on, get it. Kite needs to turn around. Not broadside. He needs to get turned around. All right. Now he just needs to utilize some dead tanks. Throw that sucker in reverse. Get behind Logan. Nope, he's going to stay broadside to the STI. I oh, don't agree the, with his The mouse he was praying for there. Where is my $50? <laughs> I'll post it to you. <laughs> Wednesday fights will get that digital money right to you guys. <laughs> Does it come in bitcoins? WZ. It bounces leaving heat. Oh, getting a little too far sideways. A little. Yee. Run back, <laughs> up a hell of a fight, though. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh my god. He should not be alive this long. If he can face hug this STI, he might win it. If he can take down a full health ST uh, one for one shot, I'll be incredibly impressed. Oh, and there ah. it is. Oh, GG. Great job. Wow, taking it down to the wire there. One, who would have thought it would have came down to a 1v1 scenario? I didn't think so. It looked like quite a decisive victory for DP early on as well, which is unfortunate. I think I feel like if um, Lorvate would just push you to extra aggression, they could have quite easily won that. They had the overmatch early on. Spaniel coming in with a 42-38. Good job. The big winner of that round coming in, taking three tanks on at one time. Uh, are you down today? Almost 4,800 damage. GG's great job, both teams. Thank you for yeah, coming out. Very impressive. Well, that, that WZ, not to mention over a thousand bounce as well in a tank that's not exactly inundated of armor either. Very impressive. All righty, guys. I'm going to open up this room. What we got coming up next? UGCC versus Nightmare. This is going to be awesome. Everybody go get a drink, get a beer, get a taco, get a burrito. Go get some chips, get a pretzel. I'm British, so I'm going to get a cup of tea. You're going to go get a, couple, a cup of tea and a little bit of crisps. Room's open. Everybody's coming in. There's a nerve from the Immortals. Oh, God, here comes a nigga in the neighborhood. Hey. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> So we're just ready to, to slide on in here. Lots of good com uh, commentators and spectators. Everybody's doing great. I will be right back. I just need to go uh, get a refill on my cup of tea. Can you guys hear me all right? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You sound a little different. Sounds like you're in a, a Folgers coffee can. Sounds like I'm in a coffee can. I don't know, it's a different, it's a new set of uh, earbuds, yeah. some wireless ones. Yeah, they're different sounding, I can tell you that much. I'm going to turn on a little bit of music here, let every, uh, let all these teams in here, I'll be right back. Go ahead, commentators, and spark up a little bit of interest, who's going to win this one, UGCC or Nightmare, coming up next. Well, I personally haven't seen a lot of, if anything, from uh, see, uh, UGCT. Nightmare I've seen played quite a few times as well. I'd, I'd say they're probably the more experienced team, would that be accurate? Yeah, I've seen them a few times on Wednesday Night Fights. Uh, Definitely got some of our experience under their belt from <laughs> over 10 games, I'd say. Uh, Nightmare obviously have a... Uh, the huge advantage of having a, like an awesome logo. What is the? Uh, uh, let me guess. That's you are made their logo. Huge advantage any fight, man. I see UGCC has got this. And... I need to top up that T. <sighs> I 
Are you still uh, handing out logos? Frazzle? I will take that as a no. Like what, um... Oh, he's muted himself. That's that explains it. What did you say? Oh, it's gonna ask him if he's still doing logos. Oh, Fallout. Yeah. Uh, he's still doing logos. From what I've seen. Yeah, I was gonna see you. If I could uh, get one. Omega does them pretty good. He does them for free. Oh,